Hey, Happy New Year's from Brian Kuzmar and Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. Hope you're having a wonderful day, and I hope you had the day off, because we certainly took the day off kind of quiet here, and so it is with markets as well. Up a little bit, though, good news for all us gold and silver peeps, and I'm going to go over the course of the year here and kind of things that have happened real quickly. Uh, first, I'm going to move on to our lovely picture here. This is live on uh, New Year's uh, what is it? New Year's Eve, actually. I'm sorry, I should know that. I just said New Year's. I was going to say New Year's Day, but New Year's Eve, 80 degree temperatures. It's kind of a little bit windy out there, but uh, and the surf was pretty rough this morning. Uh, kind of an indication of how our last year has been. Uh, that surf right there. Anyways, let's kind of move on to a couple things here. <laughs> Goodbye to cluster. Fuck 2020. Hello, blankety blank blank 2021. Who knows what's going to happen? You can't really know the future. However, there are things that we do know because of what's happening here in the past and over the past year. So kind of let's go over some things over the past year, and I'll do it real quickly. Some things that have never changed are wars. Wars have never changed, folks. We're continuously in war. Our budget is like right through the roof. Um, you know, the, uh, the industrial war machine has been there forever. I mean, one of the things that we produce the most of in this country is arms and, and weapons and stuff. We produce billions and billions of dollars of weapons that kill other people, kill, you know, I know, I know we need this kind of stuff to some degree, but, I mean, just look at how much money we spend on this and the misery it creates. But some things never change, and they probably never will. Uh, this is going to continue past my lifetime, it looks like, no matter who's in office and who's running the world. Uh, for some reason, we like wars. Uh, another thing that never changes, too, uh, even though we're still seeing it this year, and maybe even worse, is the uh, politicians out there. Uh, they just, you know, they tell us one thing, they do another. This is the same with all government officials. And again, maybe some things are just timeless. They happen all the time. But it seems like it gets progressively worse and worse and worse. My parents said it, their grandparents said it, and I'm saying it, it seems to get progressively worse. Uh, sometimes you don't see it in your day-to-day -day lives. Sometimes it's hard to see it because it just happens so slowly. It's an erosion of everything. And I won't go into that. Corporate media, America's number one enemy. Keeping you uninformed with deceptions, distractions, distortions, delusions. Uh, TV news lies. Well, you know, the fourth estate was supposed to be there. And if you don't know what the fourth estate is, I'm not going to explain it to you. You can look it up here. But uh, the fourth estate was meant to really protect us, to keep, the, uh, uh, keep our government branches, keep them... Uh, keep keep everything alive and, and keep things honest. Uh, however, when uh, major corporations own uh, maybe a handful of, uh, uh, you know, private interest and in major corporations own a handful of the news media, whether it's uh, Fox, CBS, ABC, CNN, uh, you know, the narrative gets written by the people that pay the money. And unfortunately, we've had a really good, no, I don't like to say unfortunately, we've had a great lesson on how this plays out. Uh, at least a lot of us have. And uh, this has been a good thing in a way. I think a lot of people have learned a lot not to trust the media so much. And something else that never changes is corporate cronyism, which a lot of people across, including Bernie Sanders people, including people that call themselves socialists and people that really kind of were upset with uh, uh, capitalism uh, for some reason. But what they don't know is they don't know the difference between uh, true free market capitalism and crony capitalism. True free market capitalism is when there's equal footing for everybody. I'm going to kind of lay it out in a nutshell. Where you, I, your neighbor down the street, the immigrant, whoever comes over here can come here and, and, and make a living just as easy as the big guy. Except that's not true anymore. You know why? Because the big guy is in bed with government. That's why. And we can't afford to be in bed with government, so we just get, I'm sorry, they, they just kind of ride over us. Meanwhile, and that's what corporate cronyism is. It's when a major, major corporation can go in there and lobby uh, politicians, pay millions and millions of dollars to make laws in their favor. And a lot of times when they do this, the, their favor is not necessarily the favor of the competitors uh, which are oftentimes small businesses and small people that they get destroyed. So, you know, Walmart, all these companies, they're, you know, even the social media companies and the company we're watching, you, you're watching me on right now, uh, to some degree can, well, I think some social medias can be an equalizer to some degree. But again, if you've got your foot in the bed uh, or if you get your foot in the door with government or vice versa, uh, the small guy's never going to get an even share. And it's going to be crony capitalism from here on out, it looks like, uh, because they really don't care about small businesses. They showed it this last year. And how did they show it? They showed it with this. I'm not even going to mention the word right here. Uh, you know exactly what this thing is. And uh, 
uh, again, uh, let's see if I can keep my videos with a higher video count and more views. I'd like to do that. But what was the result of this right here? Well, we know what the result of this. This. And what was the result of this? Well, let me move on here because I kind of missed that. This. 50 million plus people unemployed. Uh, millions and millions of mom and pop businesses just gone. And this, if you've been watching my videos for the last uh, year or, or several months, however long I've been doing them, you'll see that m one of the big things is I, I always ask, please shop local, buy your stuff local, forget about these online, buying online or from people out of state. Keep that money local uh, for a couple reasons, because most of these large retailers are in bed with government. They practice crony capitalism. They don't practice free market capitalism like you or I do or your local business does. Uh, they're, they're, they're in bed with politicians and, and why give these people even more money uh, to pay politicians even more money? Uh, that's my opinion. And again, I'm kind of digressing here a little bit, but here's, a dig here, here's how this kind of rolled right here. It went from this to this uh, to really boneheaded decisions which caused this and millions of businesses to close. Uh, however, I am impressed with our governor, Ron DeSantis. He kind of sums it up exactly the way it is right here by, by pointing out the numbers. Take a look at these numbers. Again, I don't want to quote numbers here. I want to keep this report fairly fast and uh, uh, fairly... <laughs> uh, I want more viewers, to be, be honest with you. I don't want to get myself pushed down the list for saying something I shouldn't. Uh, anyway, here you go right here. Uh, 0 to 19 years old. That is the odds. So really... Uh, we unemployed how many people, I think? We closed how many businesses? Uh, uh, and 50 million? I mean, that's just pure misery. Anyway, I'm not going to sit there and just dwell on that because we're all in it. We can all see it. And we've talked about it many times. What else happened this year? Well, this happened. Again, not going to talk about this. Uh, pictures uh, speak a thousand words sometimes and uh, 10 million words. And you know exactly what this is and kind of what it caused. It didn't help small businesses at all. It didn't help the overall environment. And then we've still got this going on right now. So, whoo, wow, what a cluster fuck of a year for sure. And I'm very sorry about that profanity there. Hopefully, Marcella had bleeped it out properly. Um, <laughs> and we'll move on to the result of all this mess right here. And actually, you know, it's just the trashing of the dollar, more or less. Uh, and an accelerated version of it. It's not like all the events of this past year uh, between the, uh, the virus, between uh, 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 riots, between election issues, between all this stuff. It's not just that. That, it, it did, that didn't cause uh, the trashing of the dollar. I mean, the trashing of the dollar has been a long-term thing that's been happening for quite some time. This is nothing new. And as I've said in the past, what has happened over the last year is really accelerated the decline of the dollar and the loss of the value of the dollar and the, and the buying power um, and really the end of the Bretton Woods Agreement in like, you know, permanent fashion without a doubt. Uh, so, uh, you know, don't be mistaken that this year killed the economy. The economy was on its way out anyway before this hit. All this is going to do is just accelerate everything. And uh, you've seen that in the commodities. Commodity prices have been accelerated in the last year. Look at the big rush into Bitcoin by the millennials and uh, uh, by certain groups of people that are trying to profit from that. I mean, so you're kind of seeing the effects of this uh, fiat currency and this stuff that I've been talking about over the course of the last year. And you're feeling good about it because your precious metals, your gold, silver, and platinum, uh, in your hands makes you feel comfortable and you watch it go up and you know it will because it has a 5,000-year track record. Is this... Helicopter money about to rain down on the world? Well, yes, it is, and it has been since 2008 they've been throwing. Remember Bernanke's helicopter? So, yes, uh, this time they finally decided to give some to the American people because they knew if they didn't throw uh, the American... You know, remember the first bailout was really all the banks. They got all the money and everything, and the Americans didn't get anything. They knew if they did that again, they'd be in big trouble. Uh, so they threw you $600. <laughs> I'm sorry, big deal. I mean, for some people, $600 is a big deal, folks. So uh, let me not be mistaken with that. And at one time in my life, uh, many times in my life when I was younger, $600 was a big deal. And maybe not so young, too. I was a hardworking man. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. So, you know, $600 is a lot of money. However, it's just a payoff. It's a payoff to prevent people from tar and feathering politicians, and it's a, it's a payoff maybe to 
help get you to vote for whoever is supportive of giving you this money. So, uh, but we know that. We know what's going on here. We know the deal here. Uh, anyways, this helicopter money, what's the result of this? Well, it's a complete shutdown and utter end of the Bretton Woods Agreement. And you know the Bretton Woods Agreement. I want to read it here. The 1944, the United States government chose a Mount Washington Hotel as a site for a gathering of representatives from 44 countries. All the major developed countries were here at that time in 1944. This was to be the famed Bretton Woods Monetary Conference. This was a conference with 44 major countries that had won the war and some that hadn't won the war, uh, but they were reformed at the time. The conference established the World Bank, set the gold standard at $35 an ounce because the dollar was backed by gold and chose the American dollar as the backbone of international change. Look at that and chose the American dollar as the backbone of international exchange. That's a powerful statement right there. The meeting provided the world with a badly needed post-war currency stability. And I'm going to repeat that again. Provided the world with a badly needed post-war currency stability. And that's what the world needed, and that's why the whole world used U.S. dollars, because of stability, and it was backed by gold. Nixon took us off that gold standard in 1971, more or less, and uh, the world kind of shuddered from all that, but they still continued to use us because they had no other big world currency to go to. However, what do you think they're doing now? They're divesting of U.S. dollars, and where do you think those dollars are going to go? They're going to come home they're going to come home to roost here at home, and it's going to cause major inflation and major issues. Why? Because our politicians, our bankers, are completely fiscally irresponsible, period. Uh, and, and we know that. And that's good for gold and silver people, and really not good for the economy. And we none of us should feel good about this. I mean, there's other ways to make money, making money in gold and silver because these people are complete economic idiots. <sighs> doesn't make you feel real good, but at least you know you're hedged. Uh, that's my opinion. And uh, what's this going to be? It's going to be the default of the U.S. dollar. It's going to be the default of the United States because the dollar is the United States. No matter where you went in the world, you went to some little forest in, in uh, uh, where is it, in Central America, or you went someplace in Africa, you know, some guy would pull out a wad out of his pocket and, and have a couple dollar bills in there. They, they say they didn't keep their own currency. They wanted to keep dollars. Uh, this happens all over the world. It did happen all over the world, except now... Uh, major countries are getting out of U.S. dollars, and once the average Joe across every major country starts looking at U.S. dollars and saying, I don't want this stuff anymore, but the problem they have is their currencies are no better. You know, it's like the U.S. dollar is the last horse to the glue factory, so to speak. So we are kind of it, but when they find alternative uh, uh, ways to get out of the U.S. dollar and, and, and not get into their weak currencies, they will, and hence, cryptocurrencies, and listen, they benefit from this, there's no doubt about that, but gold and silver with a 5,000 track, you know, year old track record is benefiting or will benefit the most um, because of its track record, because it has no third party risk if you have it in your hands, generally speaking, and uh, a lot of good things. Anyway, you know that because you've watched my show for a long time, and oh, third party risk, I was just talking about that. Third party risk uh, is a, was something that I learned a huge lesson on no matter how much you trust somebody, I don't care who it is, no matter how much you trust them, unforeseen things can happen to that person. I don't care if it's your mother, I don't care if it's your father, I don't care who it is. If you've got all your wealth or everything or something in one person, trusted one person, no matter how well intentioned, how good your mother or father is, things can happen to them which happens to you automatically. So what I'm saying is you can be invested in the biggest company, uh, you can be invested in the United States government, you can be invested in the dollar, that's third party risk. Uh, anything can happen to that uh, people that, that you trust, that company, that dollar, that government or whatever. And things can happen to them that cause you to go down with them and it's really not, it's not always their fault per se. Uh, so that's third party risk in a nutshell. Fiat currency, we've discussed fiat currency forever. Um, and that's exactly what we've got right now. We've got a currency backed by nothing. Oh, look, customers are still calling to us. <laughs> oh, boy, sorry about that. Uh, and uh, that's a fiat currency is, uh, uh, is, is suffering right now. And uh, the people are fleeing out of fiat currencies, and that's been good for uh, fiat currencies like Bitcoin, but no less Bitcoin is still a fiat currency, folks. 
Um, it's backed by nothing. And it also has what I talked about here, uh, where we go right here, it has major third party risk. It requires uh, encryption, which I'm not worried about. Encryption is probably good for another 50 to 100 years on Bitcoin at least. Uh, so that's not a big uh, worry in the short term, unless some major quantum computer comes out that just blows that stuff away, uh, which I may not doubt. <laughs> they may be 50 years ahead of us, uh, governments maybe, or, or some places. Uh, but third party risk uh, can include uh, power, uh, having access to electricity. Third party risk can include uh, uh, internet access. And as far as uh, Bitcoin or cryptos being currency in any way, anyone in South Florida that's been in a hurricane has been without power from anywhere from three days to, to three months, literally. I've been out without power for up to three weeks and, and no internet whatsoever, no television, no nothing, just utter destruction of a power by a natural thing. Do you think I had any access to Bitcoin or cryptos? No, not at all. Um, but I did have access to cash. And uh, I actually, my store was doing business too. We were, we had cash and we had gold and we were trading people uh, uh, their gold for cash that we had and they would take the cash and go buy goods that they need because all the stores didn't have uh, electricity to run credit cards or debits. Uh, so there you go. Uh, uh, no third party risk there or very little. Uh, but, you know, hey, remember, they were still trading for dollars, which is a fiat currency, remember? But at least with dollars, if you have no electricity, you have no internet. You can go to a place in the middle of a jungle with no internet. You can go to a place in, in the middle of an Africa uh, or in a desert somewhere with no internet access and no power. And if you have dollars in your pocket, you could probably trade with somebody out there. You cannot do that with Bitcoin, nor will you ever be able to do that with Bitcoin. Highly unlikely. Uh, it's always going to require electricity and internet. That's third-party risk, folks. Uh, I'd, I'd still rather have the dollar as a fiat currency, but I do love Bitcoin for one thing. I love Bitcoin because uh, uh, Bitcoin is, uh, I think it's the future on transfers. I mean, like, you know, why, why use banks? Why use uh, uh, financial institutions to take a cut of my money when I can just send my money directly from me to whoever? Uh, that's kind of cool. I like that technology, but don't be confused. It's still fiat currency. It's electronic digital fiat. Uh, and again, who made uh, Bitcoin? This guy. <laughs> and I'm not dissing nerds because without nerds, man, we wouldn't have all the greatest inventions in the world, including me having the ability to talk to you right now uh, and you be able to listen. Uh, we need nerds. But remember, uh, technology changes. The nerd right here is going to be a lot different than the nerd 20 years from now. And technology changes. And uh, don't forget, you know, people create this stuff. Man creates it. It's not like gold and silver and precious metals, which is created by the stars. It's created by supernovas. It's created by the coolest shit in the world. Excuse my language. Uh, it, it, uh, I mean, really, it is. It, it's finite. I mean, if you, if you ever read about how gold and silver and platinum noble metals came into existence, it, it's, it's an incre quite incredible uh, uh, story, uh, so to speak, in physics and, 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 and everything else in science. So I highly recommend you, if you're a gold bug, and even if you're not, uh, that, that you read about how gold and silver was created. I mean, you'll be, you'll be really, it's cool, trust me. Uh, well, let's take a look at spot prices here. I'm going to, I didn't, I chose not to kind of wait till the end of the day here. I, I, let me update these prices right here. And uh, boy, I love this uh, company that does these spots. Um, World spot looks like New York closed at 1893.10. Uh, that was a couple hours ago, and uh, silver closed at 26.33. So in New York, uh, gold did not close above 1900. Silver did not close uh, uh, really well. Silver's doing great, man. It's closed above 2600. I was going to say 27, but it really hasn't touched there yet. It did early a couple weeks ago, I think, or within the last few weeks, but it was really temporary. Uh, but he, but gold did go up to 1900, but it didn't close there in New York. Uh, for some reason, it's kind of like precious metals are weird like that. It's like, I don't know why 1899 is such a big difference between 1900 uh, 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 and precious metals, but it always is. It's like there's such resistance to just like well, close at 19. Instead, it'll close like a few bucks, but from, uh, you know, below it. But for all, and it does that with 2000, it does that with 2100, did it with 1200. You know, it's like 1199. But anyways, uh, that's just an observation of mine. I don't know why well, precious metals does, that, especially gold. Uh, so the low was 1890. So it traded in like a $10 range here, uh, and it closed at 1893. Silver's doing freaking great. 
uh, year end, and uh, platinum doing pretty damn good too. Um, you know, I forgot to do uh, my research and see what the uh, platinum and gold and silver prices were at the beginning of the year, but I can kind of off the top of my head, I know this stuff. Uh, so, and you know what? We can take a look here. We can actually do a search. Uh, so gold, 1898.32 uh, in the aftermarket, so a little bit higher than New York, and that's good. World markets are going to close closer to that 1900 mark, and uh, silver's done damn well. It's above that 26 mark, and uh, platinum's done pretty well by uh, being above that 1050 mark. Uh, and actually, oddly enough, take a look at this. Uh, gold a little bit lower in New York, but higher in uh, uh, Europe, uh, in world markets, I'm sorry. Uh, silver. Uh, uh, 2633, and again, higher in world markets. Platinum at 1075, but lower in world markets. <laughs> Platinum just does its own thing. I mean, I, I tell you, it's just completely decoupled from the other two, gold and silver, but still, ultimately, it will follow the prices of gold and silver, in my opinion. Uh, but it's kind of like decoupled doing its own, own thing the last month. Uh, my prediction. Woo, what are we going to see at the beginning of the year on Monday when the markets open again? Man, I just don't know. I'm not even going to guess. Uh, uh, I'd like to tell you we're going to see prices skyrocket, but, you know, uh, who knows? Who knows? It's been very unpredictable for me lately. So let's just play it by ear, and I'll talk to you on Monday. Uh, so let's take a look here. What else we got going on? Oh, yeah, the gold and silver bulls, folks. Well, that's us right here. We are definitely gold uh, and silver <laughs> for sure. It's going to be a great year for us as far as precious metal buyers go. Um, you know, sub two thousand dollar gold is still a great price, man. You know, get in below this two thousand mark, you're fine. You know, if you, if you don't hit the uh, the lows and you can't buy the dips, you know, hey, listen, no big deal. You're you're in a big dip right now. It's below two thousand. It won't be uh, sometime here in the future. And the same thing with silver. Silver's going to pop that thirty dollar mark, and it's going to go from there. Uh, so you're going to say, man, sub silver was, uh, you know, silver dollar sub thirty dollars was a great price, and, and I think it is. Again, you know, will it dip lower? Will we have dips this year? Will we have some big surprises? Sure, we will. But the ultimate overall trend is upward for us. Oh well, happy New Year's, folks. I hope you have a really safe one uh, tonight, and make sure you get out there and light off a few fireworks and bang some pots and pans together. Let the government, let everyone know that we're still alive and that we're not going to just tuck ourselves in and, and go hide someplace. Uh, get out and have some fun as well. Just be safe. That's all. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Wear Coins and Precious Metals, wishing you and your family and everyone, your friends, yeah, I don't, everyone you know, a happy and wonderful New Year. Um, I don't know what else to say uh, other than, again, just stay safe and we'll be open next year. Our regular hours, Mondays through Fridays, 10 to 4. Call us anytime at 954-493-8811. And uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions. We're open 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., like I said, uh, Mondays through Fridays. And we're looking forward to having a wonderful year. And again, thanks for watching, folks. I really appreciate it. Uh, talk to you Monday. See you next year.